Okay, so I have been messing around with lighting, and right now I'm just playing with it. And unfortunately, I'm on a web camera, um, so the visual quality and the video quality, I can tell by just looking right here that it's not very good. Anyway, I'm playing around with lighting. I've got lighting from the top. I've got lighting coming from the side. It's actually, I'm playing with different colors. Um, this web camera, though, is awful, and it, you can't balance it or anything. It's not very good. So, but I'm playing with it anyway. So, all right, on to today's topic. I got a little bit obsessed today. I found this program that is an alternative to a Adobe After Effects because I looked at the pricing of After Effects and it was way too expensive. I just don't want to pay a monthly fee, monthly fee, 30, 20, 30 dollars a month. Okay, so the idea with After Effects is you have a video and you want to just change it afterwards. You're not cutting and, sl and splicing things together. That I have a different program for. I actually use Filmora for that. I want a program to just make the colors look better, to modify just a few things, make, make things stand out a little more, add a little contrast. That's all. I don't want anything fancy. I don't want fancy special effects. So I started looking at this program called Natron, N-A-T-R-O-N. And if you are on this channel, you probably or you found this video, you probably already know what it is. Now, it's it's pretty confusing, and I'm just gonna skim through what I learned today and show you what I learned, and throw a, a quick to, uh, example together for you. But here's I'm gonna tell you right away what I wish someone would have told me from the beginning before I even found this out. This software program, it's open source, it's free, it does not do audio, so don't think that you can make a video and then put and then expect audio to come out all right right away there's no audio so you're gonna have to splice that in later so right now you're looking at a lot of work okay but it's still very interesting and it's still very cool and I'm gonna go through it and show you what something that you can do okay so uh, Natron this is I've been one day I spent a few hours with this and this is so bear with me Natron so you have a viewer, and your viewer is tied to what you can see here, and there's nothing there yet. So I'm going to add some video to it. And to do that, first of all, bear with me while I find something to add to it. New videos. I took some video in an art museum yesterday, and I'm just going to drop it right here. So you have what's called a reader, and that means it's reading something. That could be, that's your input. Read is input. Okay, so if you're reading something, and you have a viewer and you want to see it, so you have to tie your viewer to what you're reading. Now here's what you can see. So you're building these blocks, and these. And I'm not, this isn't going to be super detailed. This is not a tutorial. I'm just throwing together what I did today, kind of a vlog, that's all. If there's interest in this, I will go through and teach you everything I've learned. There's already tutorials out there. They're actually not that good. Um, there's nothing professional or anything. They're good. I'm glad people did them, but they're not good enough. So we have a video, what's called a reader. We have a viewer so we can see it. And now we can start pushing things along the timeline. And this video I took yesterday, and there you can see it. That's fine, right? But if you want to modify it, you have to add in different blocks. This isn't layers like in uh, most programs. So I'm going to add some text to that. Okay, so we are. So now we're going to. I'm going to make some text, put it on the screen, make it fade in, stay, and then fade out. Okay. Um, you can kind of see when I do this how difficult this program is. How, how much there is to learn. Um, right now, I still find it interesting. I want to find out the power of this, but I'm a little bit concerned about how difficult it is to be doing this. So we're going to create two objects, a text object and a merge object. First of all, I'm going to create the text object. So we go to Draw, Text, now this is just like any other text object. You can change the font. You can change what's in it. I'm going to put some random text. I'm going to make the font really big. 
font size. Okay, you can't see it yet because it's not connected. Notice it's not connected to the viewer. So to do that, as I learn, find it a little bit strange. I'm going to go to Merge, Merge Plus. Thank you for the tutorial today, whoever did that. Now, I'm going to disconnect all these little connect pipelines. Okay, we have to think about what's underneath what. So if you have something on the bottom, it would be lower in the alphabet, like a C or D, and then something higher on the alph alphabet, like an A, would be on top of the layer. So you would be able to see it. So we're going to put the text on top, so that would be an A, and the video on bottom, which would be a B, and then now we cannot see it because we do not have it to a viewer. Now we have it here. It gives you this little drawing tool. Um, I'm not going to change this. You can make it smaller, bigger. You can do all kinds of weird stuff with this. Um, anyway, I'm going to leave it as it is because that's not the point. Now we have some text and it's stuck there. And this is what I learned in the tutorial. What we're going to do is make it fade in and fade out. So what you're getting with this tool, I think, is tons of control. The problem with that is that it takes a very long time to either learn and do, and then you still have to bring it, once you make it in here, you have to take it back and add sound and then make it into a real video. Let's finish this up and make it fade in and fade out. So let's not have it just be there the whole time. At frame 100, notice that you can have these, these have numbered frames, so you have so much detail. At frame 100, I am going to take the plus object, and notice this becomes highlighted, plus 2. See the name over here, plus 2? This is plus 2. I'm going to go down to mix, and what I think that is, I think it means it's mixing the two objects. I'm going to set that to 0 right here. So you're saying 0 right here, frame 100, right click, set key. So now it's actually at zero at that point. Now we're going to go drag over to 10 frames. Oh, let's go 20 frames. And now I'm going to set it to one, which means up here. Once again, set key. So now what we did, we set it to zero from zero to 100 frames. That's gonna fade for 20 frames and then set to one full text at frame 120. So, so if we look at this video, I'm going to drag it from frame 80. It's going to go whoop. And now it's going to be for the rest of the video. Now we got to do the same thing in reverse to make it disappear. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to make it, I'm going to leave it at one, but I'm going to set a key. I'm going to go 10 more frames over. I'll make it 20. Now I'm going to make it 0 and set a key. And now from there, from 170 to 190, it's going to fade away and become 0 again. So you see I just added some text that fades in and fades out, and I can pick the exact frame that I want it to be. Right away I can see I have more control than I do with my other Filmora, but I actually have to do a lot more work. I'm, I'm down to the frame level, you see. So, I'm not going to go any more deeper because I should not even be giving you tutorials. But, if you look at all these tools and you start seeing maybe there's a lot of power that you can have with this. You can add a color object. Um, I did that earlier. I added a... It was a color and... I made it black and white, basically. I forgot how I did it, but I made it black and white color wheel you can you know you can do your normal transformation things like you would do in a photo in this studio now here's the problem to write your file out here's what you do you write a file you we were reading before now we're writing I'm gonna right click go up to image I'm gonna create a write object here's where things got messy for me so on my desktop, I decided I'm going to put a video, an MP4, right? Hello.mp4. And then I come down here and I pick 
uh, MP4. Look at all these different types. I'm used to MP4, so I decided to pick MP4, right? Guess what? I got an error every single time, and I couldn't find any help on this. So here's where I was thinking wrong. What I was doing was I was trying to build the video right here in an MP4 format. What I really needed to do was build this into kind of a raw format because I'm still not done with it. You're going to build your raw format here. Then you're going to bring it back into some other video editor. And in that way, you'll, you'll really edit it over there because this is just for magic effects. Okay. The problem is I got this to, to create an MP4 file, but every time the quality of the video was very bad because the codec that's included with this apparently doesn't work for MP4. It's it, every time it looked terrible, like it was super grainy and everything. So here's my advice to you. If you're trying to do this, first of all, what you do is to write, you have to grab, you grab your source here, and now you can write by either going up to render, render selected writers, and that will start writing your file, or you can go here to your write object, see how this is highlighted? And here's all your options, your format, your MP4s, and all that. So if you pick MP4, I could show you, but th there's no need to. Um, what I found worked, finally, is I went to MOV. First of all, what I did was right-click, image, write. Go here and pick MOV. And it's more of like a raw format. And I noticed it took longer to render. It took like a three minutes instead of one minute. So it was doing a lot more work. Um, so I picked MOV, hit save. And now these settings and codecs is for the Apple ProRes something or other. And now it creates a raw file, which I cannot view on my computer. But I was able to drag that into my other video editor and it recognized it. You see, that's, that's something they never told me. So you're creating like this raw file that you've, you've modified. You drag it into your video editor and it says, I know what to do with that. Then you can modify it. So you do your magic here and then you go back to and use it your regular video editor, which is for me is Filmora, which is a very simple program. So that's just a, uh, a little tip. So here I've got my name untitled MOV. I hit render right here, this button. It's going to this file. Uh, it says failed, which is lovely. MOV fail. What? Why did it fail? Input layer could not be fetched. All right. I don't know if I want to debug this right here and now. Here, my source wasn't connected. See that? Let me hit render again. So now you get this little progress tab, and your node your nodes are over here. I don't know what curve editor and, and dope sheet is. Um, but now it's actually rendering and see it's taking a long time for this little video. So it's putting it out in this QuickTime movie, Apple, whatever. It's very raw and the quality is going to be as good, pretty close to what it was before. So this is a little tip, get you out there. I'm already addicted to this program. I know it has some power. I don't know what the potential is, um, but it's driving me crazy.